The first step in deploying the Kubernetes is putting your app inside the container. But why stop there? In this episode of Kubernetes Best Practices, let's explore how you can create small and secure container images. Thanks to Docker, creating container images has never been simpler. Specify your base image, add your changes, and build your container. While this is great for getting started, using the default base images can lead to large images full of security vulnerabilities. Most Docker images use Debian or Ubuntu as the base image. While this is great for compatibility and easy onboarding, these base images can add hundreds of megabytes of additional overhead to your container. For example, simple Node.js and Go Hello World apps are around 700 megabytes. Your application is probably only a few megabytes in size, so all this additional overhead is wasted space and a great hiding place for security vulnerabilities and bugs. So let's look at two methods to reduce the container image size. Using small base images and using the builder pattern. Using smaller base images is probably the easiest way to reduce your container size. Chances are your language or stack that you're using provides an official image that's much smaller than the default image. For example, let's take a look at our Node.js container. Going from the default Node 8 to Node 8 Alpine reduces our base image size by 10 times. To move to a smaller base image, update your Docker file to start with a new base image. Now, unlike the old on build image, you need to copy your code into the container and install any dependencies. In the new Docker file, the container starts with the node Alpine image, creates a directory for the code, install dependencies with NPM, and finally starts the Node.js server. With this update, the resulting container is almost 10 times smaller. If your programming language or stack doesn't have an option for a small base image, you can build your container using raw Alpine Linux as a starting point. This also gives you complete control over what goes inside your containers. Now, using a small base image is a great way to quickly build small containers, but you might be able to go even smaller using the builder pattern. With interpreted languages, the source code is sent to an interpreter and then is executed directly. But with a compiled language, the source code is turned into compiled code beforehand. Now, with compiled languages, the compilation step often requires tools that are not needed to actually run the code. So this means that you can remove these tools from the final container completely. To do this, you can use the builder pattern. The code is built in the first container, and then the compiled code is packaged in the final container without all the compilers and tools required to make the compiled code. So let's take a Go application through this process. First, let's move from the on-build image to Alpine Linux. In the new Docker file, the container starts with the Golang Alpine image. Then it creates a directory for the code, copies in the source code, builds the source, and then finally starts the app. This container is much smaller than the on-build container, but it still contains a compiler and other Go tools that we really don't need. Let's extract just the compiled program out and put it into its own container. So you might notice something strange about this Docker file. It has two from lines. The first section looks exactly the same as the previous Docker file, except that it uses the as keyword to give this step a name. In the next section, there's a new from line. This will start a fresh image, and instead, we'll use the, instead of using Golang Alpine, we will use raw Alpine as the base image. Raw Alpine Linux doesn't have any SSL certificates installed, which will make most API calls over HTTPS fail. So let's install some root CA certificates. And now comes the interesting part. You can use the copy command to copy the compiled code from the first container into the second. This line will copy just that one file and not the rest of the Go tooling. This new multi-stage Docker file contains a container image that's just 12 megabytes. The original container image was 700 megabytes. That is quite a difference. Using small base images and the builder pattern are great ways to create much smaller containers without a lot of work. Now, depending on your application stack, there may be additional ways to reduce your container image size as well. But do small containers actually have a measurable advantage? 
Let's look at two areas where small containers shine, performance and security. For performance, let's look at how long it takes to build a container, push it to a registry, and then pull it down from the registry. For the initial build, you can see that the smaller container has a huge advantage over larger containers. Docker will cache layers, so su subsequent builds will take very little or time for either. But for many CI systems that folks use to build and test containers, they don't cache layers, so there is a significant time saving here. Just think about how many times you're building and testing your code. Now the container is built, you need to push it to a container registry so you can use it in your Kubernetes cluster. I recommend using the Google Container Registry. You only pay for the raw storage and network, there's no additional fee to manage containers, it's private and secure, and it's lightning fast. In fact, GCR uses many tricks to speed up pushing. You can see that the time to push both the containers for the large machine is almost the same. This is because GCR uses a global cache for common base images, meaning you don't need to upload them at all. With the small machine, the CPU becomes the bottleneck, and you can see there's still a significant advantage to use small containers. If you're using Google Container Registry, I highly recommend using Google Container Builder as part of your build system. As you can see, it's much faster to build and push than even the large machine, and you get 120 build minutes free per day, which should be enough to cover most people container building needs. Now comes the most important performance metric, pulling the container. While you might not care about the time it takes to build and push the container, you should really care about the time it takes to pull the container. For example, let's say you have a three node cluster and one of the nodes crashes. If you're using a managed system like Google Kubernetes Engine, the system will automatically spin up a new node to take its place. However, this new node will be completely fresh and will have to pull all your containers before it can start working. If it takes too long to pull the containers, this is just time where your cluster isn't performing as well as it should. Now there are many cases where this may occur, such as adding a new node to your cluster, upgrading your nodes, or even switching to a new container for your deployments. So minimizing pull times becomes key. You can easily tell the smaller container is much faster than the large container. And you're probably running multiple containers on your Kubernetes cluster, so these times can add up quickly. Using small, common base images for your containers significantly speeds up the deployment times and speed at which new Kubernetes nodes can come online. Now, let's look at security. People often say that containers are more secure if they're smaller because they have less surface area for attacks. Let's see if this is actually true. An awesome feature of Google Container Registry is that it can automatically scan your containers for vulnerabilities. So I built both the on-build and multi-stage containers a few months ago. Let's see if there's any vulnerabilities in these old images. Wow, there's only three medium vulnerabilities for the small container, but 16 critical and over 370 for the larger container. If we drill into the larger container, we can see that most of the issues have nothing to do with their app, but rather programs that we're not even using. When people talk about an increased surface area for attacks, this is what they're referring to. So remember, build small containers. The performance and security benefits are real. I'll see you on the next episode of Kubernetes Best Practices.